Welcome to Bog Panda. This is Kelly, but I'm going to pretend I'm Mike to introduce this episode. So here's my Dr. Mike impression. Hi, welcome to Bog Panda. How many of you play with 40-year-old things at home? Pretty good, huh? That sounds That's like you. <laughs> That's the kind of thing you'd say. It is. It is. But I'm Kelly at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter and Instagram. And with me, as always... I am Dr. Mike, an official pagan on everything. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Uh, hit up the merch store. We're always trying to come up with new t-shirt designs that aren't banned immediately. And come back and watch some more. We need to get the watch time up on here. So make sure you guys catch up on any episodes you haven't seen and revisit the ones you enjoyed the most, which should be all of them. That's right. And you'll put us over the top if you just watch our Doom related content. Just search. Yeah, if we Bug we Panda. just need to make a Doom playlist, and it's going to be like four hours long. So yeah, it's to be tons of stuff. And we're going to add to that stack today because uh, there was a pretty cool uh, video out there, related article on getting uh, the ZX Spectrum uh, up and running and playing Doom. So. How familiar are you familiar are you with the ZX Spectrum, Mike? Extremely limited. Um, my introduction to it was actually YouTube videos. Um, there are some there's some great videos. Uh, a couple different channels do these like uh, franchise retrospectives on certain games. So I remember watching one on I want to say it was Double Dragon, and they were talking about all the different systems that that was ported to. And Double Dragon in particular is pretty interesting because a lot of the ports of it are very different than the arcade game. Like they, they just tried to make a double dragon game for the, the platform rather than port the arcade game in a direct sense. But one of them was a, as the X spectrum port of it. And I remember seeing it, it was like a game early game boy esque graphics only instead of monochromatic, it was like three colors, but they were like bars of color <laughs> across the screen not even like split up by characters like if a character was in the red bar and jumped up to the blue bar their head was blue for a second and i was just like what the hell am i looking at <laughs> and then um finally got to play some of it on super console x yeah it uh so i wasn't super familiar i knew it was kind of out there i mean you could i mean if you were gonna do an analog it's kind of like a precursor to the the Commodore 64, would that be, would you be willing to go, you're giving your 64 expertise. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to diss it too much, but I'd say a precursor to it. I mean, definitely pre precursor. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it, and it's hard too, because with Commodore being such an, with there being such a huge active community. And as much as I'm a big fan of it, I know nothing compared to what so many of the homebrew community and these indie companies can do. There are games that are coming out now, like a more recent game, Soulless, which is one I really want to cover on a future episode. Looks like an early Super Nintendo game, but playing on a 40-year-old piece of equipment. So, I mean, they've come so far in what they're able to do and all the tricks that they've learned. So maybe the earliest Commodore programs this would be comparable to. Yeah, I was saying precursor, not the entire yeah. price, but <laughs> similar in that you're going to plug it in. Basically, you're going to typically it's built to be more plugged into a television for your monitor yeah. and some of those things. And, and it's the kind of self-contained keyboard and system and all that. Uh, it was uh, actually released in the United Kingdom in 1982, making it right around 40 years old. And, uh, and here was, I was born. There you go. So you, you and the Sin, Sinclair. <laughs> um, I'm the ZX spectrum of co-hosts. <laughs> there you go. Mike Z, Dr. Mike ZX. <laughs> um, the so I did so they've created a version of Doom on it and it looks pretty good. It actually looks it better than yeah. some of the it looks other way better than anything I've seen on there. Yeah, it uh I mean it was it impressive. Obviously, you're you're not gonna get uh the the shading and the colors, and we'll come back to that in a in a second, but it's a pretty faithful recreation. You know, you've got to accept what the platform can do. So yeah, you're gonna get different textures on the walls but it's a much simpler texture and it's it's and there's not exactly shadows in this game uh and the sprites for for some of the the, the monsters are not nearly as detailed but it's still pretty cool it looks really really good 
Uh, so just kind of for fun. And I know people much smarter than Dr. Mike and I watch this show and will correct me as I talk through, uh, as I get into some of this technical spec stuff, I'm sure that I'm going to be kind of misrepresenting some things. So please straighten us out in the comments and by us, I mean me uh, on this stuff, but I uh, just wanted to do, I was really interested in doing a bit of a compare and contrast because I looked at it and I said, okay, there's obviously limitations here, but this is a darn good execution. Seemed very smooth, seemed like really good playability to it. But I wanted to do a little bit of compare and contrast and kind of the hardware and the horsepower behind it and all that. So the Sinclair could produce 15 shades of color, <laughs> 15 different colors. That was actually seven colors. Um, at different level and then repeated at a different level of brightness and black. So that's how you got your 15 colors uh, on the Sinclair. Um, we don't even count colors anymore, <laughs> you know, on, 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 X, on double X dragon X. does not have 15 colors. <laughs> the, uh, the, um, yeah, well, it was, it was capable of, so you yeah. have the right, I think, I think all 15 colors were used to great effect in the doom version yeah. we saw and that's why i was so surprised because again like as soon as i got you know as soon as i got my hands on on some roms for them the first game i played was double dragon because that was my introduction and it looks as bad as it did in the youtube video this looks significantly advanced beyond the few games i have played yeah it really really does uh because and i guess roughly because we don't count colors anymore but let's just say 16 million so 15 versus 16 million on colors available there's a start. Uh, resolution, 256 by 92 for the Sinclair. Uh, now you go with like a Nintendo Switch. It's 280 by 720. So a little bit of difference there as well. Uh, the horsepower behind the CPU. Um, the Sinclair uh, CPU ran at 3.5 megahertz. Uh, a Nintendo Switch runs at 600 megahertz. So again, a little bit of difference. Subtle differences. And Yep. And then the last subtle difference is memory. Uh, roughly speaking, if you kind of slap RAM and ROM together on the Sinclair, 64 kilobytes of memory available. Uh, we're kind of like stock off the shelf Nintendo Switch again, 32 gigabytes <laughs> and expandable beyond that. Not into, you know, into more of a card memory at that point, but um, just pretty cool. So, uh, given those, and now obviously most of the PCs that Doom ran on weren't running at those specs. They were backed off of that some, but they were already on that curve <laughs> away from the Sinclair. Uh, so it was just really impressive work in, in what they've done. Uh, you know, but you know, we've seen Doom played on potatoes at this point in time. So it's really, but it's nice to see it. I was just really impressed with the the execution because I thought it looked looked eminently playable. Yeah, and, and again, not that I'm any sort of an expert on uh, the Sinclair as a, as a platform, but given my limited experience with it, this seemed like something that wouldn't be possible. And particularly the use of colors and things like that, like I said, in the few games that I played, colors are represented as just flat colors, bars of color across the screen. So the fact that you're seeing distinctive colors in, in the different sprites and things on the screen is already passed what i would have guessed it could do based on my limited experience yeah i mean just i was just even struck by the the, the main character face it's on the hud you know right there in the center mm. kind of looking left and right a very faithful recreation again obviously you didn't have this the the palette to work with completely but for given what they did have to work with man i instantly recognized it the features were dead on the reactions were dead on uh, so it was just super impressive. So, uh, we had just come across this, definitely thought it was worth kind of mentioning any excuse to talk about doom. We take, we've done it again. You should watch all our doom stuff, get our hours up. Please help us out. Check out that doom playlist. That's right. We should, we should probably make one of those. It's going to be <laughs> really shit. Yeah. So cool. Anything else, sir? No, I, I think, though, if if we're going to continue to cover Doom and can add to an actual playlist on there, we should start uh, basing, we should come up with a certain criteria for these. Like, 
you know, like you mentioned with the HUD, like how faithful is the HUD to it? Is this something that's instantly recognizable as Doom that you're playing? And especially because obviously people are not going to stop making Doom on absolutely everything, which is great. And I don't think they should. But I do think we need to start setting certain criteria. And I think an obvious one is how recognizable is this as Doom? Like just at a glance of some footage. Yep. Yeah. Would, yeah, would you be able to identify it? Yeah. Can you just look at this and go, oh, that's Doom on, you know, a sewing needle kit or something, whatever it is that they're putting in. A stick of butter. <laughs> Definitely. So we will work on the Doom quality checklist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just maybe, just, to... And not, nothing big, but like a, you know, like a three or four point checklist of like, it's got to hit these certain marks. Does it, yeah, does it look like Doom? Does it sound like Doom? <laughs> does it play like Doom? I think yeah. those are probably all, all pretty important criteria. Cool. We'll workshop that. We'll have that ready to go on our next Doom episode, which will be soon, I'm sure. <laughs> we'll yeah. talk about it. Somebody played Doom on a spider web they found in their garage. <laughs> That's right. We'll, we'll cover it. We'll keep all the Doom <laughs> news is here. Mark Panda.